Today we're going to have a quick look at the updated DFA 75 night vision unit. Now there's been quite a number of improvements um, by comparison with the first model that came out. And I'm going to give you a very quick run through of just how to, to get the system set up and on your rifle first before I go in and show you what they've changed. Now the first thing that you need to do with a front mounted night vision unit like this is organize the right attachment for your scope. So I've got the 56mm um, objective lens adapter here and the key with this is making sure that you choose the right insert so that this can buckle down nicely. So I'll just show you these here. And once you've found out which insert allows the adapter to fit nice and snugly on your scope, you insert those and simply tighten up the, the Allen screw just here and push down the lever and this should be a very rigid unit on your scope and if I just uh, remove the night vision unit that I've already attached which simply removes via a bayonet fitting you'll see what it looks like before you put the night vision unit on uh, it's very simply um, just the adapter with a bayonet fitting inside it's very important that this is fitted rigidly to the scope because if there is any movement in this at all your night vision unit will not hold zero with your scope. So it's vitally important that you get these inserts fitting correctly and this is on nice and tight. You might even want to um, tighten up the uh, little Allen screw at the top here a little bit further than the, the lever allows you to tighten it just to make sure you've got that secure fitting. That done, you grab your night vision unit, you line it up with the, the bayonet fitting inside and you just wiggle it on and then slide it round so that the, the locking lug can insert just here. And once that's done, you are pretty much ready to start using the unit. Before turning the unit on, obviously you have to insert the batteries. That is done in exactly the same way um, as it was in the Mark I of this model. It's just a, a little battery unit here. Very important to make sure that uh, the batteries are around the right way it's not as you may think with springs on one side um, for negative. Uh, just have a look at the side of the battery casing. It tells you which way around to put the, the, uh, the batteries in. That goes back in the right way around. And once you've got it um, loaded up, now it's a simple case of turning it on. That's done via this button on the side here. Hold this in for a second. And when I look through the scope, I should now see the display. With the display showing, the first thing to do is make sure that your unit is actually square on the scope. Now you can do that just by looking through. You might want to, at this point, focus the night vision unit. And this is done with this little knob on the top here. Just twist it left and right until it's focused. You can do it just by looking through it to make sure everything looks square. But there is actually um, a crosshair setting inside the night vision unit itself, which can aid you with this. Now, to access it, what you have to do first is access the menu button and you do that via this um, twisty knob here. And if you hold that in for two seconds, you will get the display in the middle. Now, this is the first upgrade that they've done compared to the um, original version of this, is that they've made the menus in right in the center of the screen. A problem with one of the early models is that the menu was at the bottom and quite often with higher power scopes, you simply just couldn't see it. So with the menu accessed in the middle, if you scroll down um, and across to M2, which is the, the second menu setting, uh, you will find what looks like um, two arrows touching one another. And if you click those two arrows touching one another, you will end up with a crosshair on your screen, which is projected from the night vision unit. And that will allow you to make sure that everything is, is square. Now once you've done that, now you get to the point where you, you want to zero the scope. Now they've also made this a lot easier than with the original model. It was very much hit and miss initially to be able to get um, the scope and your day scope um, on paper with the rifle. And once you got it on paper, it wasn't too bad to, to move your bullets around, uh, well move the settings around to get your bullets where you wanted them to shoot. What they've done with the DFA 75 Mark II 
is I've actually given you some distance settings and this makes it tremendously easy. Now, all you need to do is know what range your rifle's zeroed in at. So this is 178 HMR. This is zeroed at 100 yards. So the first thing to do is change um, everything on here to a yard setting. And you do that by going into uh, menu two. So I'm just gonna access the menu here. And there is, it just says M slash Y, which is obviously meters, yards. Go into that, go over to Y. That's it set on Y. So with it changed over to yards, I simply scroll up from the M slash Y to D, D standing for distance. And if I scroll through this, you'll see that you've got anything from 15, 20, 30, 50, 75, 100, 150, and 300 yards. Now I've already said this is zeroed um, at 100 yards with a day scope. So I simply scroll back through that until I get to 100. And once I've done it, depress the menu button and that is now this calibrated to a 100 yard setting. Now it should be a case of simply lying down, um, taking aim on the target, pulling the trigger and this should all be calibrated now um, to the 100 yards and the bullet should go exactly where my day scope is zeroed. If you find that it is not quite right, all you need to do is go back into the menu setting, um, go over to the second menu which is M2 uh, below M2 you will find something which looks like a little target and when you access the target you will find a little crosshair on your screen much in the same way as in the Mark 1 you move that over your um, crosshair which I'm just going to do now sliding the menu button left and right and then once you've got it on the, the vertical axis click it in once and then that'll allow you to adjust the up and down and once you've done that that should be it calibrated to the um, actual scope itself so essentially all you're doing there is moving the little X over the center of your crosshair it should be pretty close and then you will notice if you press it in again you'll have an X and a Y with two zeros beside it and that's basically saying that everything in here is set to, to zero coordinates and it should be a simple case of now scrolling the X that you can see on your screen over where your bullet actually landed so you want to hold your crosshairs from the scope where you were aiming not where your bullet landed and while holding it where you were aiming, move the little cross on your screen over where the bullet landed. And then once you've done that, hold the menu button in for two seconds. This is very important because it resets everything. And on this model, unlike the old model, it actually gives you an OK. And when you see that OK written beside it, you know that everything's set. It's a case of lying down and taking a shot and seeing if it's just a little bit closer. If you find that it's a tiny bit out, you just go through the whole process again um, and it should be within you know, one or two attempts you should be bang on the money and that is that the biggest improvement that they've made over the old model is the fact that you will be able to get this on paper initially um, really quite easy because of this um, increment setting that they have and then you can tweak it once it gets there and the other major improvement that they've made to allow you to put uh, a night vision uh, infrared unit that's not just made by Pulsar but any aftermarket unit is they've got this little weaver rail on the side here so if you wanted you could put a Nightmaster on the side and these uh, external units as I know from testing other night vision gear really do make a tremendous difference and certainly on this unit I put the Nightmaster on it um, and it really does transform it so with all of that said that, that is pretty much all the improvements over the the initial uh, mark one that came out and it really has transformed this as a night vision unit a lot of people had quite a lot of problems um, just getting to grips with how the system worked it, it wasn't all that clear but pulsar have um, you know tackled the problem that people were facing and they've made um, the system much simpler to follow and i'd say it's a bit more intuitive the menu settings inside and they're a lot clearer 
uh, visibly they're clearer on the screen and they're also in the center of the screen so that you know everybody can see them even with higher power scopes and it makes makes a big big difference and uh, if you know if you want a night vision unit to put on your rifle that you also want to be able to use during the day um, this is you know, a, a really good bit of kit and it has made a huge difference now that they've brought out the Mark II. The rest of the settings on the scope are pretty straightforward. You've got the uh, variable illumination of your IR unit that comes with it um, on the side here and just by twizzling this knob here as opposed to depressing it for the menu settings you'll get your, your brightness settings and it's important to play around with those to get the best out of the scope to get a, a nice clear picture. You will find that depending on the light and depending on how bright your IR unit is you will want to adjust um, you know, the brightness levels inside but they, they are pretty straightforward and in the instructions you, you can read all about those yeah, it doesn't take much explaining to understand how they work. Now there is one last thing to talk about with the DFA 75 and this corresponds to both the Mark II and the Mark I model and that is where your bullet will actually go depending on the distance because um, it's a front mounted unit and the lens uh, for the night vision unit actually sits above the tube of your scope you will find that unless you're exactly at the distance that the scope is calibrated for so in this case it was 100 yards corresponding to the 100 yards zero on the scope you will either shoot a little bit high or a little bit low if you're further away or closer than that 100 yard zero. So if we zero it, and I'm gonna show you how to go about that at say 50 meters, what you are doing essentially is angling the line of sight of your DFA unit to transect the straight line of sight from your scope. So it comes down at an angle like this, passes 50 meters and beyond. And what that essentially means for shooting is any distance that's less than 50 meters when you take a shot, your bullet will drop low. And any distance beyond 50 meters, when you take a shot, your bullet will actually go high. It's a little bit counterintuitive to what we're used to with bullet drop. Now obviously, this is a 178 HMR, and if you were to extend the range out and out and out, um, they would eventually merge, but I haven't got to the point of working out exactly where that is. So we can see here the result of setting up the DFA unit to a specific range. We had it zeroed at 50 yards, which was slap bang in the center of this circle. I came into 25 yards, took a shot, dropped the bullet two and a half centimeters low, exactly where I was expecting it. Moved back to 75 yards and it put the bullet two and a half centimeters high, again, exactly where we expected it to go. This bit of drift is just because it's a bit windy today, so the light 17 gray bullet is moving a bit. So that's absolutely fine. Now, because it's a diagonal line of sight from your DFA unit down to a straight line of sight of your scope, if you were to zero it at 100 yards, you would end up with exactly the same differences in bullet placement at 50 and 150 yards with the 100 yard zero. So you need to set it up depending on the caliber that you're using and what ranges you expect to be shooting. I'm pretty happy with that and I'm sure we'll be able to roll over a few bunnies with it now.